What's going on Falcons fans, Logan here. Welcome back to Rise Up Rundown, and if you're new here, welcome. So there's a quiet rumor going around that the Atlanta Falcons are thinking about releasing their tight end, Austin Hooper. Now he's a big fan favorite amongst Falcons fans, and I'm really happy to say this. I'm with you guys. I think Austin Hooper is a great tight end, and I even think he's a top four tight end in the league right now. I think it'd be a huge mistake if the Falcons actually do decide to release him, and I'm about to explain why that is. Austin Hooper was the 18th pick in the third round of the 2016 NFL Draft. He played college at Stanford, which supposedly people call tight end university, and then obviously he was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons. He was always a pretty good tight end in college, but nobody really cares about that. All people want to know is, how is he doing in the NFL? To me, he's doing great. Like I said in the beginning of the video, I think right now, he's a top four tight end in the league. He's behind Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, and Zach Ertz, of course, but hey, that kind of says how good he is, right? The dude is getting his name out there in the NFL world, and if the Falcons do decide to release him, I think this would be a huge mistake, and I have three reasons why. The first reason being, Austin Hooper is the Falcons' best tight end since Tony Gonzalez. Now I'm not saying Hooper is just as good or better than Gonzalez, obviously, but the tight ends before Hooper came in was like, Levine Toilolo, Jacob Tammy. I mean, come on. This isn't me saying Austin Hooper is better by default, but he still sucks. No. Austin Hooper is a legit and reliable tight end, and I think is proof he is our best tight end since Gonzalez. Now, how can I prove Austin Hooper is our best tight end since Gonzalez? That leads into my next point. Number two, he improves every single year. Not only does he improve statistically, which we'll get to in a second, but even on film, he's been impressive. But let's go over statistics first. 2016. 19 receptions, 271 yards, and 3 touchdowns. 2017, 49 receptions, 526 yards, and 3 touchdowns. 2018, 71 receptions, 660 yards, and 4 touchdowns. 2019, 75 receptions, 787 yards, 6 touchdowns. It's pretty clear that he's become one of Matt Ryan's favorite targets, and why would he not? Matt Ryan loves throwing to tight ends. But he hasn't done that since Gonzalez left. Until now. And even on film, and say what you want after you watch these clips like, oh, these were lucky plays, or oh, I want to see more than just these plays, I don't care. I think the clips I'm about to show you is just enough to prove how good he is on the field. Take a look. Third down and three. Ryan, pressure, in trouble, lets it fly deep, wide open is Austin Hooper! Now it's a foot race. Stiff arm against Dents. Hooper is gonna go. Ryan fires over the middle. It is caught. Hauled in for the touchdown. Thanks, and that's the passing game. Play action with the motion downfield. Ryan and somehow he finds Hooper. And off the play fake, shot being rushed, throws a little screen to the tight end Hooper. And a big game. Austin Hooper stays on his feet. Matt Ryan, clock running, end zone throw. And did he hold on? Yes! Whether that was a catch or not, it's still one heck of an acrobatic effort. Did you see Levine Tololo or Jacob Tammy or whoever else we had make these acrobatic plays? It is not by default. Austin Hooper seriously is a reliable tight end. And the third reason, he wants to work. Almost, if not every offseason, we always had these reports that Austin Hooper will skip summer trips or something and will improve his football skills. Basically, he's always willing to work and get better. Hell yeah, I'd keep Austin Hooper. He's dedicated, he's driven, he's almost proven this guy wants to work, and clearly it pays off. So I'm going to end this off by saying, I'm officially a huge fan of Austin Hooper. I love this player. I'm with you guys that he's an underrated tight end. And if the Falcons release this guy, 
I don't care about cap space. I don't care about who you see in the draft or free agency. Trust me, you will regret it. I hope I got my point across, and if I didn't, that's okay. I don't mind making another video on him, but I'm telling you, Atlanta Falcons, keep Austin Hooper. But that's my thought on that. Now it's time to answer your guys' mailbag questions, and let's just get straight to it. Football Films ask, when will the Falcons' next playoff run be? Not getting in the playoffs, but getting further. That's a little hard to predict, but um, let's just assume next season, in 2020. Let's just say things don't work out. The players we have now, with Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, Grady Jarrett, and even the coaches like Dan Quinn, Dirk Cutter, uh, I know he's not a coach, but Thomas Dimitrov. Assuming 2020 does not work out, like we don't go far in the playoffs, or if we just don't make it to the playoffs in general, we would definitely start to rebuild. And if we start to rebuild, I think it would take four to five, maybe six years to actually not only make the playoffs, but get further. So I guess the answer is... Assuming we don't get things figured out in 2020, we would start to rebuild for four to six years, and after that is when we'd get far in the playoffs, but that's just me. MSC Plays and Dominique Roseberry basically asked the same question, how do you think the new uniforms will turn out and what will they look like? I think they're going to be great. The new stadium looked really good, so I expect the new uniforms to look good. Um, I think the people in Atlanta know what they're doing. Now, how do I think it's going to look? Some people think it's actually going to have gold, just like, you know, Atlanta United does, which I'd actually be a really big fan of. Like, maybe they'd have red helmets and then a black uniform, but the numbers are gold. I think that's a pretty good guess on what the new uniforms are going to look like. Or maybe they're just not going to have gold. Maybe it's just going to be all black on the bottom and then some red on the helmet. I don't know. It's either going to be black uniforms and a red helmet, or red helmet, black uniforms, but with gold uh, numbers. But it's definitely going to have red and black. <laughs> Let's just say that. But I think it's going to look really good. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to have a lot of guesses on how this looks soon. Uh, I might make a video on that. We'll see. But um, yeah, they're going to be really good. Junior Leone asks, do you think when Neal comes back, he will switch to linebacker or stay at safety? I think when Neal comes back, he definitely stay at safety. It's kind of hard for me to imagine the Falcons would uh, switch his position to something that he... I'm not saying he can't do good at it, but I just think he wouldn't really have like a whole lot of experience at the linebacker's position. I think they do... Neil a favor and just kind of put him at the position he's at but it's definitely a good thought to move him at linebacker because it's not that Keanu Neal is terrible at coverage but he's definitely not the best he's really used like a camp chancellor like he's really just used to hit people hard so it's not that crazy to think he, he should be switched to linebacker but I don't think he will Falcons fan asks is Matt Ryan going to throw over 13 picks this year if he does, it's not going to be that much over 13. It maybe be like 15 picks. I think that sounds about reasonable for Matt Ryan if he goes over 13 picks. It's definitely under 20. There's no way I don't I don't see Matt Ryan throwing over 20 picks. So under 20 picks sounds about right. So if he does go over 13, I think about 14 to 16 picks sounds about right. Brian Hogan asks, could you make a mock draft video of who you think we will target this draft in each round? Yes, sir, that is coming. I just don't know when. Uh, every year I plan on making a mock draft video for the Falcons. I did that in 2019, and I actually remember I walked away from it pretty impressed. All I know is that I predict that the Falcons will get an O-lineman in the first round correct. Now, I didn't think they were going to get two offensive linemen, but I was still proud I got the offensive lineman part right. Um, so I'm definitely going to make a mock draft video for 2020. I just don't know when. Demetrius Washington asked, I'll keep it short and sweet. Why the hell did Arthur Blank not fire <laughs> uh, Thomas Dimitrov? 
Well, he definitely has a good relationship with him, and I think the whole team does too. Uh, just like with Dan Quinn, the team loves Dan Quinn. Arthur Blank loves Dan Quinn. They wanted to fight to keep him here in Atlanta. It's the same here with Thomas Dimitrov. The team fought to keep Thomas Dimitrov here on the team. So Arthur Blank just has a pretty good relationship with Thomas Dimitrov. And hopefully with kind of a wake-up call for Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov, 2020 hopefully is when they go like, okay, the team fought to keep us here in Atlanta. Now let's actually prove why they did that, I guess. So hopefully things work out, but... I guess the answer to your question is they have a good relationship with each other um, and it'll definitely be hard to fire him if that's the case if things don't work out for 2020 but they they just have a good relationship with each other which is good to know but let's hope everything works out for 2020. Ghost Peppers ask if Dan Quinn has another losing season do you think Falcons fans will continue to make excuses for him to stay and I wonder what's the breaking point for Arthur Blank to say Enough is enough. Well, I don't know if Falcons fans would give him excuses to stay because when we were 1 and 7 last year, we had Falcons fans saying to fire Dan Quinn and stuff. So I think the Falcons fans will definitely want Quinn out um, and also Thomas Dimitrov. And when is the breaking point for Arthur Blank to say enough is enough? That one, I'm not quite sure, because he's just, I'm, he's a hesitant guy. Like, he just is so hesitant at 1-7 to be like, yeah, Dan Quinn's not enough. He, he didn't fire him at 1-7, and, and I guess you could see why in the second half of the season, but I don't know, that one's tough to predict, because he's just so hesitant to fire both Dan Quinn and Thomas Dimitrov. But hopefully if the Falcons, well, I don't want to say hopefully the Falcons do bad, but uh, if the Falcons do bad, hopefully they fire Dan Quinn. Um, but I don't know, that one is definitely tough to predict. Ghost Pepper has also asked, do you think Thomas Dimitrov will ever get it right when it comes to building in the trenches? Well, anything's possible. Um, Thomas Dimitrov, I don't think is that bad. Of a general manager. Now, this is not me saying he's a good general manager, but this is me saying that I don't think he's as bad as everyone makes him out to be. I think he knows positional value. Like, he realizes, you know, interior defensive lineman is not the go. Like, a lot of people thought we were going to get Christian Wilkins last year, but he realizes, okay, we don't need, like, an interior defensive lineman in the first round. We're going to go for offensive line. An offensive line is a pretty big issue. Um, and then also going for corner pretty early in the draft because corners are pretty important nowadays. You know, fact of the matter is, I, he knows positional value. So that's why I'm a little higher on Dimitrov than others. But that is not to say I think he's some genius at football. So I think it's definitely possible for Dimitrov to get it right when it comes to uh, building in the trenches, but <laughs> uh, is it probable he gets it done? No, because I don't know. He uh, he hasn't really been on his game since 2016. Let's just say that. Stephon's Rollins asked, what do you think about David Johnson pickup for the Falcons? Definitely interesting. Um, he's not who he once was. That's safe to say. A lot of people thought, oh, well, he's just on a bad team. The Cardinals are just rebuilding and David Johnson needs to play elsewhere if he's going to be good. Well, now the Cardinals picked up players like Kenyon Drake, and though the Cardinals are not a good team, Kenyon Drake is balling out. Not balling out as in like he's the next great running back, but you know you, you know what I mean. He's just doing well. So now it's kind of scary to think maybe David Johnson is just not who he once was. And if David Johnson comes to the Falcons, do I think he'd improve the running game not really because of Dirk Cutter, but it's definitely interesting, and it's definitely possible he could change the running game for the Falcons, but do I think it'll happen? Not really. Rise Up Beatdown, <laughs> almost sounds like Rise Up Rundown, asks, do you play Madden 20? Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I don't play Madden 20 because of... <laughs> uh, it's kind of like a funny story. Uh, there was one day where... Me and my brother Lawson were playing Madden 19, and 
Uh, he basically lost this game out of just nothing realistic. Let's just say that. It wasn't a realistic play. And he said, yeah, I'm not going to buy Madden 20 if EA continues to make Madden games so unrealistic and rigged. And <laughs> uh, he kept his promise. He never got Madden 20. <laughs> uh, so that almost like got put into my brain that I should not get Madden 20, so no, I don't have Madden 20. Now, am I gonna, like, boycott Madden? I don't really know. Madden 21 is gonna have the Falcons' new uniforms, so that's probably why I'm gonna get Madden 21, but do I play Madden 20? No. Speed Falcons for Life asks, do you think the Falcons will win the division? Unfortunately, I'm gonna be honest and say no. I think the Saints have one more year left in them to try and win at least the division because are they going to win the Super Bowl? Hell no! But, um, I guess, you know, if they have Drew Brees and Sean Payton, you can't really, uh, I don't know, doubt they're going to win the division at least one more time, but, um, let's hope the Falcons win the division. Blue Duck asks, Arthur says the new uniforms are to symbolize Atlanta's culture. So, should Falcons fans who live outside of his perimeters pick a new team with traditional values and uniforms? What a friggin' joke and marketing play. Well, I understand your frustration for sure, simply because I also don't live in Atlanta. I actually live in the state of Florida, believe it or not. So, I understand the frustration, but I don't think we should switch teams because they're trying to symbolize Atlanta. Because... Let's just be honest, the Falcons, at least recently, haven't really had the most luck getting fans to go to their games, so Arthur Blank is trying to do his best to make sure everyone in Atlanta, or at least nearby, goes to those games. So he's trying to make Atlanta important, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, but I don't think that means you should switch teams, you should definitely just kind of stay loyal, even if you're not in the city like I am. I understand the frustration, but I don't think you should switch teams just because they're trying to um, make the uniforms kind of like Atlanta's culture, if that makes sense. Like, he's trying to make Atlanta important, and that's definitely what an owner should do if you're um, an NFL owner. But um, no, I don't think you should switch teams. Falcons fan also asked, what would happen if Matt Ryan got hurt? Uh, I'll keep it short and simple. Our season would be done. <laughs> um, now... I don't know if it'd be entirely done thinking about it twice because last year we saw like the Chiefs and the Saints and even the Steelers and the Eagles like in 2017 obviously. A lot of teams I guess can succeed with a backup quarterback. Now they don't look as good obviously but I guess they can succeed with it. So I guess it's not that hard to say the Falcons could succeed if Matt Ryan didn't stay healthy. I mean, Matt Schaub didn't look horrible when he was in. Now, do I count on Matt Schaub or anyone else not named Matt Ryan to actually keep the Falcons in contention? No. <laughs> I personally think if Matt Ryan got hurt, the Falcons would be in trouble, but that's just me. Nicholas Coton asks, when Julio Jones' contract is over, would he retire or sign with a different team? Uh, I think he would just retire because he is getting older. Now, he's not like that old, obviously, but he is getting older. Um, I think he's a loyal guy when it comes to the Falcons. Like, I think he, you know, he doesn't ask for too much money all the time. He doesn't want to switch to a different team just because the Falcons are not in the best shape. I think he's loyal to the logo, if that makes sense. So I think he would just kind of retire. Rise Up Beatdown and Zachary Stone basically asked the same question. Do you think the Falcons will be a good team and make the playoffs? It's possible because they have the roster and I guess they have the culture if they want to keep Dan Quinn and whatnot. But do I think it's probably going to happen? Unfortunately, no, but I hope it happens. Jazzy Jeff Real Talk asked, When is it ever time to move on from Julio Jones? I'm not saying it is time. I'm asking when do we have the conversation? Honestly, I don't think we ever will because the elite players in the NFL, you never really hear these talks that it's time to move on from them, you know? Like, I don't know if the Lions ever had this big talk that they should move on from Calvin Johnson or 
uh, you know, be, w when Antonio Brown didn't have this uh, weird brain damage type of deal, the Steelers never had this big talk of, oh, we should move on from Antonio Brown. You know, say what you want, but they, they definitely didn't have that talk till he had that stupid whatever the hell happened to him. Uh, the Patriots, you know, maybe they have this conversation, but they're not, you know, going crazy like, should we move on from Tom Brady? Like, the elite players, I just feel like they never really have that conversation. So they just kind of stay good their whole career. So uh, that's just me. I don't know. I just don't think we'll ever have that talk, in my opinion. I think Julio Jones is just that good. But, um, and, you know, I, I just hope for the love of humanity we never have that conversation that we should move on from Julio Jones because um, he's just always good. So um, I don't know. I, I just don't think the elite players ever have that conversation. But that's just me. Rise up ATL asks, how long do you think we have before we finally bring the Lombardi home to Atlanta? I say four to six years. It kind of goes back to the first question I answered. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was looking at my notes. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I don't know. If we don't get it done by next year, um, we would be in real be uh, rebuilding process. And it would maybe take like four to six years, I guess to get good and bring home the Lombardi. I agree, I think four to six years sounds about right. And then Jack B 1872 asks, is Matty Ice the most underrated quarterback in the league? Yes, because even the fans want a different quarterback for whatever reason, and I might even make a video. Now, I don't know if the fan base is going like super crazy that they want Matt Ryan out or anything, but there are fans bashing Matt Ryan and if it gets really crazy I'll probably make a video and say look Matt Ryan is not the problem so yeah I would actually say Matt Ryan is the most underrated quarterback because even the fans bash him uh, and the media doesn't give him credit you get the idea Matt Ryan threw for 4,000 yards um, 26 touchdowns I think he had a pretty good year um, even if the team was not very good. Matt Ryan was great this year, and yet he does not get enough credit, so yes, I do think he's the most, the most underrated quarterback in the league. But that's all I got. Hope you guys agree with all that I said. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below, and I'll see you guys this Friday with a video at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern. As always, rise up.